Well, we're equal weight with a $10 price target as well, having cut our numbers repeatedly through the quarter. For the quarter, the issue is, as Phil outlined, really everywhere outside of the U.S. The U.S. was largely on track. In terms of the analyst day, we just don't, you know, we, we think they would have, had they had it, talked about downsizing in South America and Europe. So they claim to have deferred it to get some time to discuss that with constituencies. We think even if you go through that and why we're still $10, they could actually be successful in downsizing, driving up margins, and we just don't see that much upside in the stock. They'd be doing what Fiat, Chrysler, and GM have done already. And frankly, those stocks, uh, particularly GM, have not been rewarded for that. Brian, uh, Brian, it's Evan Newmark. This brings me to my question, which is, are these totally Ford-specific issues, or is it still just an issue of overcapacity in the global car industry? I mean, we go back, everybody, everything with the world was coming apart. Ford was the only one that wasn't bailed out, at least officially, by Washington. And here we are 10 years later, and the, the industry really has never fully recovered, even though conditions, you would say, have been extremely good for the past decade. Look, it's, it's a structurally better industry than in the Bill Ford days, but it's still not perfect. There's overcapacity in South America. There's overcapacity in Europe, particularly in the sedan market where Ford's part of Ford's business is. And in China, while it's not quite overcapacity, the slowing growth has hit latecomers like Ford particularly hard. Uh, Brian, I mean, if you really dial it back, it seems as if the market um, is essentially pricing in uh, something bad in terms of where the auto cycle is headed. But then also, who knows what comes after? I mean, is Ford being viewed as just a sort of structurally disrupted type company just because of the, the product category it's levered to? Uh, in part, you know, because if you compare it to GM, um, it doesn't have the vehicles on the road operating autonomously like GM has. I think for it, it comes back to a lot of execution outside of two strong points for them, the pickup trucks in the U.S., LCBs in Europe and South America. Everything else they do is not performing at world-class levels.